Hello and welcome to PMZLounge.com. Now, if you have been following our coverage, if I may say so, of the develop schedule process, you already know that there's a lot to study and a lot to learn in this process. First link in the description is going to take you to a related article. If you would rather read an article than watch a video, head over to the first link. The second link is all about schedule management knowledge area. Everything that we have discussed, including everything from the develop schedule process area as well. So everything that you need to know from this process, it is available in that link. If you're looking for critical path method, third link in the description is going to take you and teach you everything that you should know about CPM. Now with this video, let's round it all off. Let's finish the develop schedule process once and for all with all the tools that are left over whatever that we have discussed before this video the tools and techniques that we have discussed they were the most important from your pmp exam perspective the ones that we are discussing now are not as important as the previous ones but are still good to know they may randomly show up as options at least if you don't have direct questions on them in the pmp exam they may be listed somewhere as options in certain questions in the PMP exam. So it's good to know what these are. Let's get started. So the first tool we are going to discuss is known as what if analysis. And there's a famous quote that says, if something could go wrong, it will. So how do you counter this? How do you tackle this situation? What you basically do is you can think of every single thing that could go wrong, right? So that is precisely how the what if analysis work. Basically, you sit with your project team and you consider everything that could change or could go wrong during the course of your project. So, and what its impact is going to be on the schedule. So this, as you would have rightly guessed, kind of touches the risk management area here because you are sitting with the project team and you're considering what could go wrong, what could change during the course of the project. But this is part of schedule management and not risk management because you are considering situations, scenarios and stuff that could go wrong and have an impact on schedule. So if there's something that could go wrong, there's something that could change and have an impact on cost, you are not looking at those things during your what if analysis. That is something you would look in your risk management when you're working on your risk management. So this helps reduce the unknowns. Of course, if you sit down with the project team and you consider everything that could change during the course of the project, this is definitely going to help reduce the unknowns. Second is Monte Carlo analysis. Now this is also a type of what if analysis the only difference here is you're using a computer modeling program to do the what if analysis for you now what basically happens in monte carlo analysis is that this computer modeling program or the software is used to simulate the outcome of a project based on three point estimates for each activity as well as the network diagram right so you are making use of three point estimates here by the way three point estimates is something that we have already discussed so head over to the description the second link in the description is going to take you to the entire playlist of schedule management knowledge area and you can go over and understand what three point estimates are so let's consider an activity as an example here so you if you could recall from network diagram each activity will have several values values like early start early finish late start late finish float what monte carlo analysis is going to do is that it is going to enter random values using the three point estimates of course and generate several iterations of the project schedule several iterations of how an activity would behave at different values of early start, early finish, late start, late finish and float, right? This way, by using the Monte Carlo analysis, you can find a better project network schedule diagram 
than the one that you have so that is a possibility it is not necessary but that is a possibility and that's the whole idea of the monte carlo analysis since you have computer program you can make use of it you can make use of the sheer computing knowledge that you possess then why not do it so that is why monte carlo analysis is used before we move further head over to pmclounge.com slash resources if you're looking for book recommendations on your pmp preparation and then there are scheduling tools so if your project schedule is designed using a software there is always an opportunity to adjust the different elements of the schedule and this will help you understand what are other possible schedule outcomes so we are making use of the opportunity because we are using a software here remember this is actually something similar to what we discussed in the monte carlo analysis the only difference between monte carlo analysis and this tool is that monte carlo analysis makes use of a project schedule which is already created this is something where we are using the different values the elements right the different elements of the schedule we are giving these elements different values during the creation of the project schedule itself so monte carlo analysis you already have a project schedule and you're playing around with the different values putting different values in its activities right while scheduling tools how you use it is you use the software that software could be anything it could be microsoft project it could be excel right if you have the right macro you can use excel for it as well so while creating the schedule itself you are inserting different values you are making use of the computing power in hand and inserting different values for different project elements like the activities you can make use of early start early finish late start late finish you can play around with those values and see what are the possible outcomes of the schedule right next is critical chain method now this is something which is not as important as critical path method that's the first thing you should know about critical chain method okay so when you use this method you consider both activity as well as the resource dependencies remember cpm only cares about the activities it doesn't account for resource dependencies so resource dependencies are accounted for in the critical chain method as well and using this you find the critical path so you need to add buffers and work backward from the delivery date into the project schedule so how does a critical chain method uh, a network diagram using the critical chain method looks like you can see that you have buffers here you have feeding buffer you have resource buffer remember we talked about this in our previous video as well then you have feeding buffer so if there is requirement of buffers in your schedule then you will use critical chain method because you will account for resource dependencies as well during the construction of the network diagram you don't do so in the critical path method but you will add buffers and you will do so you will account for these dependencies in the critical chain method and here are some of the other tools and techniques which we have already discussed so resource optimization techniques we have talked about resource leveling and smoothing schedule compression techniques we've already talked about fast tracking and crashing and schedule network analysis the critical path float slack early start late start early finish late finish how to calculate these how to find these out what are these all of these we have already discussed in our previous videos second link in the description takes you to the schedule management knowledge area playlist and it will have everything every single video on these topics available there third link will take you to everything that you should know about the cpm the critical path method and you can head over there and learn about cpm so that completes our coverage on the develop schedule process this is quite an important process and you can definitely expect some questions in the pmp exam i don't want to call out a number so i said some of the questions 
in the PMP exam are definitely going to be from the develop schedule process. CPM is something you should definitely, definitely pay attention to. Third link in the description. Go there, check that out. Learn more about CPM. And do hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified whenever we upload new content. And you can always head over to pmclounge.com, your number one free PMP resource. It contains relevant articles to every single video that we post on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash PMC Lounge. Thank you and have a nice day.